and it reads, Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Uh -huh. And they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. And if I might use for a topic really quickly, it would be the power in your tongue. The power in your tongue. You can take your seats really quickly. I want to give this word real quick. God gave me this morning to give to the people of God because he says in 2022, there has to be, you know, a, a, a gathering together, a, a uniting together for the people of God to really, really go forth in what he has called them to go forth in. And he began to deal with me about the power of the tongue. And you know, all 2021, we've been doing different series, but this last series that we've been doing have been the power of a team. And we've been talking about the connectivity of people joining together for one common goal, for that vision to see it come forth. And so we've been dealing with the power of a team. And we talked about how power itself being the ability or having the rights to do something or not do something right and then we talked about how the power that is supposed to be uh, uh, operated within a team is the power of the holy spirit because we learned that god stated that it is acts chapter 1 verse 8 that he says that when the holy spirit comes we will receive what Power. power. And so we understand that it is the power of God that we need in order for us to connect, to be able to bring forth that one common goal, correct? Amen. But God began to speak to me this morning concerning not just the power of a team, but the power of the tongue within the team. And so as I was studying and doing my little research, I had to look up the word tongue. And we all know what a tongue is. Everybody say that. Yeah. We all know what the tongue is. It's, it's that, that, that muscle, that little thing in between your mouth, right? Yes, sir. The Bible talks about it in James. My God, today, how that joker is like a flame of fire. It can burn some stuff up and it's so hard to tame. Isn't that what the Bible says? Yeah, that's what he's saying. You got to say yeah. He's saying James chapter 3. He talks about that tongue. And this tongue that he was talking about, God said there's power in it. Because this tongue can either kill or this tongue can either bring life. That's what Proverbs said, right? And so I looked up the definition for tongue. And y'all know there's a plethora of de definitions. Webster has plethora of definitions. It just got a lot of them. And as I was reading, I was reading, I was reading. And, you know, I kept reading, reading, looking up definitions. And there was one that stuck out to me that really, really connected what God was saying concerning this particular topic. And the definition is... The language of a particular people, region, or nation. A tongue is also the language of a particular people, region, or nation. So as I was reading this whole Genesis chapter 11, and it's talking about the Tower of Babel and how these people got together and how after they were together they realized that they wanted to be able to create and do something but when you read this chapter from the beginning it said in the beginning that in this particular time everybody spoke the same language there was no different language in the earth there was not another different language. You know, we've got English, we've got Spanish, you know, we've got German, we've got Japanese, we've got, we've got Chinese, we've got all these different languages. At that time, there was no different language. Everybody spoke the exact same thing. And so these people decided that because we have the same tongue, you didn't catch it. I thought somebody was laugh. I got it. Because we have the 
the same tongue. The same tongue that we don't want to be able to be disconnected because we're all agreeing right now. It said that they said because we all agree, because we have the same tongue, we actually understand each other. See, if, 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 if I speak English and you spoke Spanish and I didn't understand Spanish and you didn't understand English, there could be no connection. There could be no conversation. You wouldn't understand me and I wouldn't understand you. And so they understood the importance of being able to understand each other. They understood the power in being able to have the same exact tongue. They understood what they could do if they would remain in the same language. Okay, okay. And so the Bible says that these people in this time decided, you know what? We got power. And it's a lot of people that do not understand the power that they carry. You don't even understand that the vision you have is tied to a tongue. You don't even understand that the vision God has been giving you is actually tied to a tongue. And so these people were like, hey, I can just imagine somebody in the crowd saying, yo, we like God's people, right? Don't y'all want to see them? And I can hear somebody saying, because they understand each other, yeah, what you got up your sleeve? Well, I'm thinking about, we should build a tower. We should build something that will actually allow us to see God. Y'all ain't catching me. We should build something that will allow us to have the visibility of the glory. We should create something. You know, we all speak the same thing. We all do the same thing. We all hear the same way. We've all come from the same place. If we would get together so that we would be able to reach glory, we might be, be able to tap into something new. So the Bible says, here it is, these people are like, okay, we're going to build this tower now. So what we need to do is, we need to create bricks. Don't you know bricks weren't created until this time? Let's make bricks. Let's, let's, let's create bricks. I had to do research, I was like, Lord, were they the first one to create bricks or something? I said, wait a minute, is bricks, would that even reach heaven? The weight of that going up. And God says, <laughs> did you hear what you said? The weight of that going up. They understood the stability. They understood the weight of what they need. They understood that I can't build, I can't build a tower with any type of material. It has to be weighty. It has to be sturdy. It has to have some type of substance in order for me to build from earth to heaven. Yes, yes. That's good. So we're going to create bricks and then we're going to build this tower. And the Bible says that they begin to build this tower. And the Bible says that God looks down and he said, oh my God. Wait a minute, spirit. Are they coming up here? Wait a minute. Are they coming up here? Are they coming up here? Are they coming up here? See y'all, y'all not trying to go up. I get it. I get it. I get it. Are they coming up here? God then looks down and he says, wait a minute. We can't, we cannot, we can't allow this to take place right now. So, 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 I'm thinking, well, God, why though? I, I, I 
kept asking God, I said, okay, if, if, if they were all on the same level, same language, same stuff, why is it that you did not want them to come up there at that particular time? And God says, because I had not done what was supposed to have been done yet. God says there's a, a, a time, there's not just a time, but there's a mandated time for when I want my people who have been called by my name. To come up here and see, I'm not talking about in heaven because we're going to get there. But I'm talking about to be able to experience the glory of God. To be able to experience what God really has for his people. And I was like, God, oh, what are you saying? God says, now go to Acts chapter 2. He says, because there has to be a time for me to do. Because right here in Genesis chapter 11, it, 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 Abraham ain't have been yet. Abraham was next. Abraham was next after this. And so God says, if I had allowed them to come up, Abraham would not have been the father of faith and there would not have been many nations you. There's a timing to everything that I do in the earth. So when we understand and we sit and we cry out and we try to figure out, God, I know what you showed me. I'm actually preaching to myself. God, I know what you showed me. I know what you said. I know what I saw. But God, why am I waiting so long? I know I see it. What is it that I have to do? I'm praying. I'm fasting. I'm giving you my all, God. I'm reading my word. God, I'm walking in faith. Spirit of faith, a matter of fact. Because if there is a difference of the spirit of faith and then just having faith. See, the Bible talks about the spirit of faith being the gift that God gives through the spirit of God that gives you faith that allows you never to doubt. Because the spirit can't doubt the spirit. So if you've got the spirit of faith, then you will never doubt God because God is spirit. And so I'm... God. God, I'm, I'm, I'm fasting, I'm praying, I've got the spirit of faith, I've got ultimate faith, God, and I'm moving forward. What is it, God, that has to be done? And God says, there is a timing. you got to understand timing. You cannot get out of my will to be able to get in my will. There are so many people that got out of the will of God to try to get in the will of God. Meaning, there are so many people that wanted to be in the plan and see the vision that God did that they got out of the will to try to make it happen themselves. See, people were going to reach God. People were going to get to glory. But it was the way that God wanted them to see him and to receive him. He did not want them to have access. Flesh could not make it into heaven. It has to be spirit. If these people had gotten to heaven off of bricks and their bodies, don't you know they would have died out before they got, they wouldn't even have reached it because only the spirit can enter in. Right. Right. So they were trying to do what was necessary to get to where they needed to be, but it wasn't what God wanted in that timing. And so the Bible says in Acts chapter 2 that these people called the disciples and some believers. Somebody say believers. believers. Say it loud. Believers. And so these believers now are gathered in this upper room. They're gathered in this room now. Because God I'll ask them, well, why, why these people, this, these people trying to build this tower couldn't just go up. Why, why they couldn't go up? Because you know they said, you, you know what? I, I, I think we need to build a tower. Catch this. We're going to build a tower because we want to be, somebody say famous. famous. Oh, okay then. Wow. Oh, that, that's what it said, read it. It said, it said the people said, we're going to build this tower because we want to make sure that we last and we stay together so, and make sure that we get famous. See, there's a lot of people that want to go up in a manner that they want to go up in, even though God wants them to go up, but they want to go up for their purposes. They want to go up because they want to be famous. They want to go up because they want a name. They want to connect with people because they understand that people are going places. Or they want to connect with this one because they feel that one has a name. And God is saying, nah, mm -mm, it ain't happening like that. You're going to humble yourself first. You're going to get to a place where you understand that what I'm doing in you, it is me. He 
says, nah, they ain't going down. I couldn't let them go up. They didn't have what it took. All they had was a word and, and a language. See, you connected to a lot of people that might be speak what you speak, but do they speak what you speak? Wow. Wow. We all speak English, but do you speak spiritual? You might be understand me saying, hey, go over there. But do you understand me saying, go over there? There is a difference. And this is the problem that we're having. We have a lot of people who are in a place with people that you are not speaking the same language. That's right, that's right. You don't speak the same language. So when you get with certain people and you start holding conversation, it looks like babble to you. It sounds like babble to you. I'm going to explain what I'm saying in that babble. It sounds like babble to you because of the fact that you don't have the tongue that they have. And I'm not talking about all us speaking in tongues the same way, but I'm talking about you having the tongues of the spirit. We got a lot of tongues in the world. And God said, they had a tongue because they all spoke the same language. Tongue meaning the language of a particular people and region or a nation. They had a tongue, but they didn't have the Acts, chapter 2 tongue. There's no way that you would be able to reach glory without the right tongue. There's no way. And this is why confusion had to come in place. What? What are you talking about, woman of God? Confusion had to come in place. The Bible says that when God looked down on these people, God said, mm -mm, they're coming. They're coming. He said, so, uh, spirit, look. Um, these people have united. These people have united. And, and, and it said, and, and they all speak the same language. And um, after this, nothing will be impossible for them. Y'all didn't catch it. See, they all speak the same language. And when you speak the same language, that means that there's nothing impossible for people who have connected to make anything happen. But the issue and the problem is, it's the language that you're speaking and what you're trying to make happen. They were trying to create an avenue for their famous. They were trying to create an avenue for them to get the glory. But God was causing a confusion in the tongues. And you trying to figure out why is it that I am the only one in the family that talk the way I talk? Why is it that I'm the only one in my neighborhood that speak the way I speak? Why when I drive down the street, they don't wave and speak at me? You trying to figure out what is it that caused people to dislike what is on your life when you didn't even do anything? It's because of the fact that they don't speak your language. And God has caused a confusion because he didn't want you to connect with what was he going where you were going. He understood the power of unity. Understood that if you had connected with the wrong people and started shifting your language to their language, you would have never reached where he wanted you to go. Because he understood that if people unite, they can actually make what is impossible possible. And that's the power of the tongue. There are many people in the world that use the power of the tongue to actually tear down instead of build up. Proverbs say that the power of life and death lies in the tongue. 
and it can either cause life or death. And so there are several people that wanted Jesus dead, right? And them united caused death, but they didn't understand that it was actually life. See, they had a tongue. They had a tongue. But God also had a tongue. And God knew that my tongue would override the tongues that were trying to tear down what I had already put in place. Yes, yes. And God says, I cause confusion. The Bible says in the word that Jesus said, I came to bring division. This ain't the type of word y'all want. Y'all want this Alex. Y'all want this Alex. See, see, people want to be connected to everybody. People want to be close to everybody. People want to hold on to everybody. Let me tell you something. I'm trying to give you a new tongue in 2022. I'm trying to give you a new tongue in 2022. Because see, what you need to understand is God, God is not making your wrong rights no more. Either you're going to be right and you're going to be right. You're going to be wrong or you're going to be wrong. He's not making your wrong right no more. Because now that we're in the last days, he says, I've already put the word in place. You just have to follow it. He said, and I came to cause division. I, 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 I don't care. I don't care nothing about this. Your mama, your daddy, your sister, your brother, your aunt, your uncle, your cousin. You, you, I, I don't care nothing about that. That has nothing to do with me. Baby, you got to understand you have been chosen. You have been called. You have been set apart. You are peculiar. You are holy. You are righteous. Baby, what I place on you, what I place in you, you've got a certain type of tongue. And the certain type of tongue that you have can only connect to the people that have that tongue. So if mama ain't speaking your language, mama got to go. If daddy ain't speaking the language, daddy got to go. If sister not speaking the language, sister got to go. If brother not speaking the language, brother got to go. So the Bible says, God says, now I got to go disturb this. Cause confusion. Spirit, stir up that language right there. Switch it up on them. Send these people to Japan. Send, send these people over here to Korea. Send, send them over here to China. They, send them over there to Asia. Uh -huh. Send them over there to South Carolina. I, over here, just put them in the United States. I, I need you to send them over there. Put them in Israel. Take them over there to Jerusalem. I, I need them to go over there. I need you to, 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 to stir this all up. Move, move them all over the place. And the Bible says that as God began to shift their language, it says, after a while, it became Babel. And, and I looked up Babel. Babel means gibberish. It's, it's, not, it's not words. It's a bunch of... It's, it, it's really not words. It's, it's not understandable. It's not plain speaking. And this is why you hear a lot of people speaking in tongues. That's Babel. It's just a bunch of noise. You, 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 you know, you, you hear it. And you're like, mm, that ain't God right here. <laughs> that ain't real tongues right here. That, mm -mm. That's chant. They trying to channel something else. And it's definitely not God. And that's why you have to know who's by you, with you, around you, so you understand their tongue. Yes, Lord. 
because you can be connected to a cursed tongue. A coveting tongue. A lying tongue. That can actually try to destroy your life. But God says confusion here. Send them off everywhere. Send them off. The Bible says that temple no longer existed because they couldn't build it no more because they didn't speak the same language. God says because I want them to build a tower but they need to understand why they're going to build a tower. So there has to be a process. And the process is we're going to let Abraham come Abraham gonna do what he gotta do. We got Isaac, we got Jacob, we got David, we, we got we, we, we got all of these. Come on, all of these, all of these. We, we got a process that we've got to go through before they can understand the real tongue. And you trying to figure out why she live, why he live, why they're not there, why this one ain't there, why that one ain't there, why you had to go through that pain. Why you had to go through that hurt? You didn't understand that it was a process. That God was trying to get you with the right people. Who had the right tongues. That his glory would actually be able to be displayed. And not y'all joining together. So y'all can get famous. And y'all can get big. And y'all can go out and do what y'all want to do. And y'all can make y'all plans go for it. And y'all can make this happen. You didn't understand that there was a process. So God had to bring confusion in that. So when you got to the place where you actually would get to Acts chapter 2. Because the Bible says that after David, we got the son of David. Now Jesus is on the scene and Jesus dies. And now Jesus dies. And now we've got the disciples who are now in an upper room gathered together. And now that they're gathered together, I like this, I like this, I like this. They're gathered together. And I can just hear God sitting up there. And Jesus sitting beside him. And God looking down and saying, oh, oh. They act like they want to come up here. Yeah. You didn't catch it. You didn't catch it. Uh oh. I can see him looking down. Him in spirit. You know, Jesus, he's spirit. Him, him in spirit. Jesus. They actually in that upper room. You, you hear him? Yeah, I think they're trying to build a tower. I think they're trying to connect.
If we all had the same language, that we would be able to reach glory. We'd be able to go higher. Uh, I, you said that the Spirit of God gave them different tongues. You said they all begin to speak in other languages. That's what the word said, right? But you still got to go back to the first time that other languages was displayed. It was when the people began to build the Tower of Babel. See, at that time, there was all one language, but God had created different languages. So what he had to do was disperse a tongue that would actually reach every tongue. Because he needed somebody who would be kingdom to go to China. He would need somebody who was kingdom to go to Japan, to go to Korea, to go to Israel, to go to Jerusalem. He was going to need somebody who actually carried the tongue to go and speak to that tongue to get them to get on one accord so that we all know. Y'all scared. I dare you to speak in the house. See, after these people, we get ready to go. In Acts chapter 2, God, the Holy Spirit, and they begin to speak in tongues as the Spirit of the Lord gave them utterance, and it was other languages. The Bible says, now, the other languages heard the tongues. The other languages heard the tongues. And said, hold on. Korea said, wait. China said, wait. Africa said humble and then about kaboom with the back. That's that sound that sound like me. Wait a minute now. Ain't none of y'all Chinese over there. None of y'all over there is Korean. Definitely ain't from Africa. What is going on? Oh, okay. They must be drunk. They drunk. They drunk. Nah, they, they drunk. And there the enemy comes with confusion. But Peter said, nah. Mm. <laughs> no, see, see, see what you're seeing, what you're hearing is what was spoken. In, in, in Joel chapter 2 okay, okay. this is called new tongues and we are not drunk as ye suppose see Peter didn't say they were drunk he said we're not drunk as ye suppose cause we're drunk tell you about this drunk. This drunk gives me the opportunity to come out of prostitution and go and talk to the prostitute and tell her baby you're worth more than that. Don't you know your worth and your value? Don't you know that you are a daughter of the king? Don't you understand that what God has for you is greater than what you're going after. See, Peter was like, nah, this time, 
This tongue gives me the ability to go and talk to the rejected and tell them, oh, I understand the spirit of rejection. It was actually on me too. And I thought that I wasn't wanted and I thought that I wasn't worthy, but I understood that I was wanted to be accepted by the wrong people. And that who God really had for me was actually waiting for me to get rid of rejection so that I could be in the place where God needed me to be. Don't you understand that that rejection will have you stuck in a place where you will actually reject what you actually need? Peter was like, nah, see what you're seeing is God's spirit pouring out on all flesh. And what you are seeing happening now, because the Bible tells us, I'm going to run through this Bible. The Bible tells us that in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, that it is the spirit of God that gives gifts. And if you scroll on to chapter 14, it talks about having the gift of tongues and the gift to prophesy. And how those that are able to speak in tongues, it is good to have an interpreter so that the interpreter can actually interpret what is being spoken through the tongues. So what you are actually seeing is the fact that you don't even know that you are a part of the circle of life. And that you now are hearing your tongues. You will actually interpret what is being said. Yeah. That went right over your head. Yeah. What Peter was saying was that God was giving different languages to different people that didn't look like the people who spoke that language because he wanted to be glorified in the land. He wanted it to be where you knew that it was God that was speaking. You knew that it was God that was doing. So those that did not even understand tongues, those that could understand tongues could actually interpret what was being said so that those who needed to hear the edifying of God, to feel God's presence, to be able to dive into because they were so lost and so bound that God was going to use somebody who had the language to speak their language. And God is saying today, in these last days, who's got the language? Who's got the power of the tongue? See, when I told you in the beginning that the power was the Holy Spirit, I'm not talking about just having a language, but who has the power of tongues? The power of tongues. That when you speak, people actually revive when you speak and you open your mouth people actually are delivered that when you speak people's minds are being regulated while all you saying is Jesus because you know the language and when you know the language and you connect with the one that has given you the language there is nothing impossible because God said what is hard for man is possible with God you'll be able to do anything that God has shown you to do when you connect with God and speak his language so that when you connect with who knows your language they can actually be delivered and set free today I am declaring not just over your life but my life too that there is a people that understand my language and what God has placed to your care and what God has placed on your life that if you're connected to the right people that speak your language in 2022 it shall go forth you will not be down and out you will not be down and out you won't have to worry about any setbacks you won't have to worry about whether or not it's going to happen or it's not going to happen you're not going to have to worry about that because everything in 2022 is already going to happen it already happened and it's according to your connectivity it's according to your connection it's according to your power it's according to your tongue who speaks your language Know your tribe. Know the people that labor among you. The Spirit of God will speak when you don't know how to speak. 
When you don't know what to say, the spirit will say it for you. But you've got to be connected in the spirit. Your life, you, you've got to be so connected to God that before you open your mouth, you open your mouth.